Hey Nick, I want to get back with you if I can on the uh, Marshall Arbach uh, posting on Naked Capitalism. Um, you know, in which uh, he kind of latches on to a comment that uh, Bernanke made about, uh, you know, Lee, which is that the Congress is in, is in, is in control of whether or not uh, uh, the United States of America um, itself uh, could default on its debts, okay? And um, uh, I, want, I, I, I really do agree with you about um, the way that uh, Marshall and others uh, of the printers, you know, the printers group, um, go about making their statements, especially in this regard, okay? Um, and I actually, my differentiation, by the way, just so to be clear with, the, with it is this. To them, they say, there is no restraint, okay? But if you follow, if you read what they say, then they say, that restraint, there is a restraint, but that restraint is self-imposed. And because it's self-imposed, it's not something that, re that exists in the real world and can be readily undone by taking away the self-imposed restriction. Well, to me, that doesn't really inform the discussion when they talk about it that way, because what does it take to remove the self-imposed restrictions that we have on ourselves? And what are those self-imposed restrictions exactly, you know? Um, For instance, you know, one of the self-imposed restrictions that they say is, is, is really has to do with the recall, basically increase that debt limit in order for them to, to spend, uh, to borrow up to a certain level. Well, you have, first of all, the monetary uh, sovereignty restraint, the restraint on monetary sovereignty, which is the Federal Reserve Act. That's a restraint on monetary sovereignty, okay? A self-imposed restraint on monetary sovereignty. Does he does he does he address that? No, not none of them do. By the way, and that is a big part of my criticism of it. They they want to pre posture that they take is that is that it's almost implicit that that's a self-imposed restraint. If you understand anything about innate what uh, uh, the power of a sovereign nation, and you understand that any restraint put on its monetary power is a self-imposed restraint. Yeah, but it's still there. You know. You know the setting up of the of the European Monetary Union. That was a second tier of a restraint on on monetary sovereignty. The first would have been any private central banking activity, uh, where a government has to either meet its budget through taxation or borrowing. That is a self-imposed restraint. Okay, but they don't talk about that. They ignore that. They want to. They want to make it. You know. They want to. Again, it's their posture. The posture that they take is that it's almost. A, it's almost a given. It's because you guys don't understand how things really work that you that you talk that way. Well, you know what? It's a self-imposed restraint. When you get a self-imposed restraint for about a hundred years, you know. So there's five generations of people that uh, have grown up living in under those restraints. It's easy to forget, you know, what the non-self-imposed restraint would be like. So, to me, that's a huge part of the failure of the Chartalists and uh, the New Deal people, although only some of the New Deal people, uh, I feel, are, are really sharp. But having said that, I'm, I'm trying to identify, as we, you know, to you, the fact that it is a self-imposed restraint, that it is due to the nature of the monetary systems that we set up nationally or what transnationally with the euro so that you know the Europeans they give up their sovereignty first to their private central bank and then from the private their private central bank to the European central bank so there's two orders of uh, uh, of uh, magnitude to deal with to get monetary sovereignty restored so when you take a look at what it is that they say they say the reason for only reason, okay, for implementing that 
aspect, that spending aspect, that money creation aspect, okay, uh, of, uh, of the power of the government, is due to a lack of econ speak, aggregate demand, lack of aggregate demand, okay, supply and demand. When there's no demand, there cannot be any supply. That is to say, there'd be an excess supply. There would be no demand, there will be, soon enough, there will be no supply. And that's where we're at. Okay, Nick? We're, that's where we're at. Uh, and I want to give you the cause of that, because this goes back to, you know, several videos and exchanges that we've had. And the cause of that is the creation of debt money. The creation of debt. Okay? And you remember the chart where... You know, the creation of debt and the creation of wages was a parallel line for the really great moderations, you know, that came, you know, to the mid to late 70s uh, until we got to the disruptions, two disruptions, one being the energy price disruption in the economy and the other being the continued creation of credit thingies, which are really debt thingies, okay? So if you don't create enough money in wages, and that's a you know, big discussion of why that is and how that is, but it's a fact, it's a result, that you're not creating money in wages, and then you create debts, and you create credit cards, and you create credits, and you offer these things to people, and they become dependent upon them. You, know, you might say, well, they shouldn't borrow if they don't have the money, but they're not in control of the money supply. If they were in control of the money supply, they would have the money. There would be that money created. would be going to wages. Following me? Okay, but the Auerbachs and the Chartalists say a lack. We, well, we're suffering from a lack of aggregate demand, and you, you know, correctly characterize it as as a lack of uh, utilization of resources. And you know, don't you? Know, there's no need to differentiate between whether it's the people resource, the natural resource, or the financial resource. In all cases. There's a lack of them. That's what this recession come depression is going to be all about. Okay? And so the question becomes, in those times, in those periods of times, if we're a national economy and if the job of the government is to promote the general welfare and we don't have jobs, we don't have the basic things that create the demand within the economy, then it, is the, it becomes the government role to enhance the aggregate demand. And that's why they're saying, you know, we need to put the money in. But they talk about it only as if it's always oh, just a function of, you know, it doesn't matter, there's the deficit, there's a lack of aggregate demand, it doesn't matter about the deficit. Well, it matters about the deficit. You're right. The reason it matters about the deficit is because we have to borrow the money. We've had that discussion. And if you go, by the way, Nick, and, you know, it's not, a, it's not such a simple question, but it's a question that should the government be, as we are now, the banker of last resort and protecting the bankers, okay? Or should the government be the employer of last resort and protect the workers, okay? That's kind of what it's about. That's kind of what it's about. And what we're about is, it is our job, what we're about at economicstability.org and the monetary reformers and the Kettle Pond Institute is, it is the role of government to promote the wealth, to general welfare. And that means providing adequate capital. When you've got a debt money system that d denies us adequate capital, then you have to put it out there some other way, without debt money. A. So there's debt money, debt free money replacing debt money. Okay? B. Employer of last resort. It just means that when people want to work, we provide them with a wage and a job doing the things that we want to do. Okay? You ever been down the parkways in New York? You have the beautiful parkways that were created under the under the Work Progress Administration, you know, the best highways ever made, most beautiful, you know, because we could do it because we had excess labor. We have an excess labor again, Nick. There's plenty of things to do, plenty that needs doing. We're not going to. Is the are the private people going out there and building the roads? Are the private people, you know, going out there and and saying, well, well, we want to employ these people, so there's competition. There's no competition, Nick. You go to uh, the Center for uh, Full Employment and Equity, okay, which is uh, uh, Dr. Bill Mitchell's uh, 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 economic site, and, and, and see what they see the work that they've done there. So there is a rationale to it, a complete, full rationale to it. 
Anyway, probably over time. Thanks, Nick.